Cat. It would be handy to note that this was pre, just on the cusp of the internet's obsession with cats. I think. I think. The genesis of Cat is a patch on Korg Poly 6, uh, and in general the sound of filter sweeps, uh, the decay envelope on a certain type of filter. As you can see on this Korg Poly 6, the resonance is up to 8.53 out of 10. It's nearly a 9 out of 10. Um, so I believe the original idea behind this whole track was using this uh, this cat-like, it sounds like a choir of cats, kind of like alley cats. Uh, it's got a kind of cheeky chord progression that's very sort of, um, what is it? It's it's cheeky. It's It's amicable, but it's sort of... Those last, these last two chords just sound a little bit sort of cheeky to me. And that's been um, accentuated with the same idea on a few other synths. I don't know what synth this was. This is Audio 12. It could almost even be the Poly 6 reamped. Uh, because there is a reamp situation happening in the room reverb just for fun uh, that will be discussed later. Uh, this is Microcorg doing the same style of patch, same Korg synth, same sort of filter modeling in theory. All the cat sounds have this kind of crusty um, overdrive on top of them too. Then the same on uh, Roland JP8000, much better, with key track actually. You can hear the different filter resonances because of the key track, we're getting a filter sweep but of course the key track adds a little bit of spin plus or minus to the notes so that you have this kind of multi-tracked waveform. You can hear like three sweeps. And Massive infrasonics on that waveform. It could be some filter thing. So yeah, the idea is that we're taking these filters and playing this cheeky chord progression through them. Um, and then on top of that, we are doing a sort of prog epic uh, of gargantuan... gargantuan size. And then uh, like a little arpeggio over the top. This kind of... A lot of arpeggios actually through all throughout this. There's a little cute little uh, triplet one as well. Synth one, synth one, up threes. That comes up later, but we'll just jump ahead to that because it's pretty cute. So the beat is 16, but it's doing something strange. Oh no, it's not. It's not an arpeggiator at all. The the, the arpeggiation is happening through a MIDI. Um, on a sixteenth triplet, a, six, a dotted sixteenth. So you have a sort of steady, more steady arpeggio from um, the Poly Six over a straight beat. It's that kind of three against four thing, or dotted sixteenth against sixteenth eighth. Um, and then also the same thing is happening on this harpsichord patch. Because we've got we've got two chord progressions here. We've got the sneaky cheeky one and then we've got a weird little baroque one. So we'll play through the, the sneaky cheeky. Also these screams and this bop bop sample, this is all a um did I write this down? Extra for experts. It's uh it's a archive.org soundy called Boogie My Woogie. Uh, it's an all-female uh, ensemble, sort of uh, light jazz ensemble doing this kind of um, Boogie Woogie standard. So it's a uh, public domain. 
this kind of this one bit where they they sort of all scream and it sounds sounds quite sort of cute but the 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 idea behind that maybe was that like uh this kind of camp cliche of the housewife on the uh on the standing up on the wooden chair and there's a mouse <laughs> well this kind of like there's a there's a there's a feral cat that sort of snuck into the uh suburban bliss um and then there's this bop bop you can hear the low bit rate. Lots of things happening underneath and on top, but well, let's get back to this chord progression here. And a lot of choirs and a lot of like Mellotron. Same chord progression coming up in the arpeggiator. It's kind of Baroque. But like, a, it's a bit of a comedy show, this whole tune. And then back to the sneaky one. Bass, bass squinch. Very simple bass line from um, Zero G Nostalgia. And that would be like a cork, uh, cork, an ARP 2600 sample patch. Probably the only simple element in the whole song. And a weird amount of sort of development over the top of that arpeggio. If, again, if we can find it, because it's, um, is it Zeta? Nope, there's another arpeggiator. It's a whole wacky ride of fun, this, this, this tune. Then some more development um, of that second chord progression, this kind of Baroque thing. And the, the bass line steps up a little bit more. Going to straight sixteenths. V Station Jibble. I named all of the tracks by the way they sound because otherwise, you know, you lack context. We've got a squinch, bass squinch. Here's the, t here's the taxonomy. Squinch to jibble. Squinch, 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 squinch. Got a kind of wet sort of and then jibble. Could almost be nibble. Could almost be nibble. And this uh, using this cowbell as a hi hat. I don't know where that came from, but I did it anyway to mark the mark the baroque chord progression section. It's got this kind of um, cowbells. And they're in really odd places. It's got a kind of suspension. It sort of moves beat one ahead a little bit. Kind of go, you sort of go like one, one, two, three. Yeah. And everything's doubled up, double kicks, double. It's kind of like bub up, bub up, bub up, bub up. I really have no idea what I'm doing. Oh yeah, synth one nostalgia falls. That's that. This is that. Uh, these are hand hand done arpeggios in the MIDI. So this is. Uh, these are printed as MIDI, and they are all over the show. We're moving from a down up, uh, and upwards from sort of C six, all the way down to C one, and then reverse. Just uh, it's it, it's switching the energy to make it like it's got a kind of disorientating sense to it. Or a kind of palindromic, you can even see it, that it looks sort of bilaterally symmetrical. Um, yeah, that the, there's a sort of uh, an orientated first half and then a disorientated second half by way of development. Oh. 
there is a reverb sort of throw that's not um, processed in this archive version because uh, I couldn't get the plugin going. But there is a sort of... Maybe I could just put something on there to um, demonstrate the idea. If I can find the uh, Sen3 wherever it is on a reverb throw. Yeah, there is some stuff missing in this session, and also Sample Tank. There's choirs that I managed to get out as steams, but the uh, plugin stopped working again. So here we are. This is the pitfalls and the tribulations of digital music. It works great until it doesn't. And it might this might link up to a lot of uh, well, a few tracks that I would end up doing with uh, Eyeliner that was sort of more. Motivated by sort of sound, I'm thinking about chit chat, these kind of vocal ideas, the idea of vocal chords in general, from, from the cats, from the choirs. Um, it feels like it could be sort of retransmuted into an eyeliner piece, built around a strong chord progression. Same ingredients, different recipe. Then this weird uh, deep space sample, it's some weird synth sample not included because it's not um, able to be re-licensed into the library project because it's a, from a sample CD but Modular 01 is a little snippet of um, something you can see that I made because of obviously the really bad DC offsets in the waveform look at that who who would use not use a transformer or some kind of um, DI box to do this uh, but this is a uh, a modular session that I took some samples from uh, with the System 100M at the Lilburn um, Studios at MS2 at, Mount, uh, at Victoria University. Um, I would book out the studios till 3, 4 a.m. and just make samples on the modular and try to build sequences and do weird feedback stuff and just have a blast. So that's this, just this kind of breakdown. And then there's this kind of turnaround with the chord progression from the Baroque section, but with a, a change in the bass to make it just a bit more um, doomy and a bit more bunty. Very much reading from the book of Add N to X, the band on Mute Records, the kind of art school synth band that I still uh, adore today. Sort of evil bass lines with sort of camp sound worlds and this kind of just weird choices of uh, of, of instruments sort of mixed in with this sort of um, prog synth rock. Then a sort of counter answer, counter subject in the bass. Accentuated in the Mellotron part. another kind of bifold phrasing where it goes up and it goes down sort of almost bilaterally symmetrical I thought we had some random notes as well I try to run MIDI reset MIDI panic uh, there was just some random RPG coming through. 
the inimicable version of what you hear in the intro. Da, 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 which we cannot reconnect because sample tank just plum stopped working uh, there's a kind of like a cadence at the end of this piece the whole thing's got a kind of with the baroque what I'm calling the baroque part with that um, harpsichord um, kind of a contrapuntal uh, music sudoku like uh, trinity college type counterpoint exercise thing going on the chords C sharp minor A C sharp D C sharp minor E over E over B so yeah it's just pretty sort of consonant strange voice leading but hey it's 10 years old I wouldn't have voiced it like that these days but it's more about the rhythm of the root oh no that's all right this these notes hang on with the MIDI arpeggio that's in New Window 5 and you've got to kind of reset them occasionally. So it's got, on its own, it's got this kind of fugal uh, sort of bark quality to it. Uh, then like little random synths. I like how sort of wonky this is. Very quiet in the mix. It's more sort of cat-like filtering. Then underneath all that we have uh, a reamped room sound. I wonder if I can... Let me see if I can duplicate this over. Well, there is the, there's the session from when I recorded it. You might be, oh no, did I trim it? Let's see. I was wondering if you could hear me walk out of the room, but I must have been, must have printed that. So if we can uh, give it 10 dB, let's see, be generous. That's the, the monitors playing through to a, maybe a C3000B, the AKG mic, uh, or a SM58. It sounds more like a, a condenser. Um, yeah, this time just trying to add physical room sound to the mix, and there are no drums in this. It's just more sort of the lead pad sounds, the, the operative elements of the track getting reverb via the room. So you play the track through the through the um, through the room, record it back, put it in the mix. Uh, just trying things out. This is me just trying things out. This is just me being quirky and random. And then at the whole end of it, there is a, I added, and this is just getting silly, um, the sound of a needle dropping on the record at the end of the song, just to be crazy. Finish the song with the sound of a record starting. It's very clever. Um... Yeah, that's cat. That's me just basically having fun with chord progression, which is generally most of my life. But um, yeah, strange results from a, a strange mission that um, all revolves around filter sweeps from there. There's the cats.
cat.